What's up guys? So we're gonna get right to the part of this build that I was dreading the most, and that is reinforcing the whole rear end of the E36. Now, I mentioned it in yesterday's video where once these cars start making decent power, they tend to just rip the subframe mounts right off the chassis. Well, this thing never made decent power, and it already started to destroy itself. Yeah, that thing's ruined, and so is this one. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take plates like these and we're gonna weld them straight to the chassis, give it some more strength and never have to worry about it again. <sighs> it's not hard, it's just tedious, dirty and not that fun. First thing we gotta do is drop the gas tank. Now a lot of guys, they leave the gas tank in, that's cool. Put a welding blanket between it or put some damp towels on it, whatever. For me, I don't even want to worry about it and there's a few things I wanna do once it's out so it's not really a big deal. So we're just gonna suck it up, drop this thing and get straight to work. So you guys just witnessed me uh, spill about three gallons of gas in the ground. That's cool. But the gas tank is now out and we're ready to go. So now we have all of this room to work with and it makes everything way less stressful. So I'm very happy I did that. So the first thing we have to do to prep for all this is to get rid of all the paint, all the seam sealer, everything that's in the way because we need a nice, fresh, bare metal surface to weld to. And as you can see, there is a lot of seam sealer on all of this. This, not too much, that's just paint. But then areas like this, is gonna be a nightmare. All right, so it feels like an eternity later, it's prepped. There's no more seam sealer, there's no more paint. Everywhere that's gonna be a plate, it's just nice bare metal. You can now really see how destroyed this thing is, dude, it's so bad. But we're ready to go. So now it is time to weld all the plates in. So before we could actually physically weld the plate on, uh, we need to prime the piece and the chassis because we don't want the two pieces of metal that are touching themselves to uh, actually get moisture in them and rust over time. So this is called copper weld. It's a primer that you can actually weld through. All right, check this stuff out. So we need the chassis, now we have to do the side of the plate that will be touching the chassis. So as you can see, both layers that are touching each other, now a primer between them, which is really nice. So. so if you see, there's three holes right here. Well, there's like that little fourth one right there. So these are for plug welds. So what you do is you start welding to the chassis and you fill that hole in and basically what it does is it creates like almost like a spot weld between this and this panel. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> oh, no, I'm good. You good? Yeah, it got me like three times. So our plug welds are on there, so this thing's gonna stay in place. So now, the annoying part is welding the whole outside edge. Now you really don't need to. Um, you could probably do a couple stitch welds every inch or so, and it'll probably be fine, but just for the sake of it, we're just gonna weld the whole thing. My arms are gonna be so dead <laughs> after all of this. This is welded up, super happy. Uh, there's no reason to be a hero and weld the whole thing if you don't want to. Like I said, you can kind of just do intermittent welds throughout. So, we got a lot ahead of us because we have what, five more plates to go. So oh, yeah. I'm gonna bang out this one because it's nice and easy. And then the fronts aren't hard. It's just a lot of freaking surface area, so. <sighs> Do we cue the time lapse? Of course. <sighs>
what feels like forever later and one ruined hoodie later, uh, <laughs> all the mounts are fully welded in except the pieces that are broken. So we got this corner. This thing's, I kind of overwhelmed this. This thing is ridiculous. And then of course this piece, and then this piece looks awesome too. So Bri just got out of work and we just started going ham on this piece because this thing is really broken. So this piece was actually kind of smushed up a little bit. So I made this little, uh, U bracket right here to pull it down and uh, Brian's massaging it with the hammer so it'll actually stay in that position. Yeah, that definitely worked out pretty perfectly. Pretty so. happy with that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So once we get this into the correct shape, I'm gonna weld all the cracks, make it structurally sound again, and then weld the plate on top of it and we'll be good to go. So I'm very fortunate that it didn't fully break and the upper spot welds didn't break either. So that could have been a way bigger job. Yeah, my E46. I took the subframe down and then everything just fell out on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that's not me. Let's get a weld inside of it. Might as well while we can, huh? <laughs> oh, it's actually working out. It should stay in place now. Oh yeah, look at that, perfectly flat. That I wish, see I suck because I didn't film it because we just got straight to work, but that was dimpled in quite a bit. You can see where the, the subframe must have just been bashing it. Yeah, so I'm gonna grind this away, put it flat, weld all these cracks up, and then we could weld the plane in. Yeah. Perfect fit. Okay, whatever, we got a hammer, it's okay. So, all the spot welds right here that hold the bracket in place, we're gonna thin them out and uh, plug weld them up so they're a little bit stronger. That's literally the only thing that holds this together is these shitty little spot welds. So we can take this. It'll look good in a second, don't worry. You missed one, Jimmy. Damn it. <laughs> when you weld upside down, it gets gunked up so quickly. Oh, my fire. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I was like, man, it's really bright over there. <laughs> I hate that. There we go. There we go, we have uh, new spot welds. So, now it's time to weld all these cracks up. Okay. Nice work, Not Jimbo. Bad, right? A little bit of welding, a little bit of grinding. We end up with this. Now there's little pinholes and stuff in it. Uh, that's, that's just right. little. You can come to work and be my apprentice if you want. <laughs> this is what happens when you just weld thin metal, you know. That's cool, but now it's back to being one piece. It's strong again, and now we're gonna make it stronger. Like I said, we got very fortunate that it didn't like just tear off, you know. How does this go? So we could take this. Oh, you gotta take it back off. What, what did I do wrong? You forgot to weld through prime the Oh, the new metal, you're right, you're right. Look at that, good thing I got B-Hall here because my ah. car would have rotted into a million pieces. <laughs> All right, now we wait like five minutes and then we do it. After time lapse number 800, there we go. She's in there. Look it. Thing looks brand new again. Dude, you're like 85% of the way there. Oh, I didn't plug the little P. Anyway, I believe we'll it. So I want to stress this. This is not something you do the night before a drift event. You will hate yourself. Give yourself a solid weekend. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> this sucks. Even on a lift, this sucks. But trust me, it's worth it. You need to do it. So now we have to do one last repair. And luckily this one didn't really break off too horribly. It just kind of cracked. It didn't break. It just cracked. So we're gonna weld the cracks, just like we did on the other plate. Weld the plate on, 
and we'll be good to go. Heck yeah. You got really lucky it wasn't worse. Because oh, if yeah. it was, like I told you, I, I had you on my car, you'd have to window the inside of the trunk. Fix and the inner skeleton. Yeah, weld from the top and then it's weld that back up. So do it before you cause more work for yourself. It's already maybe too late. These cars are old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm sick of time lapses, so let's just use some YouTube magic. B, can I use your hand? Because I can't snap. And, oh, there we go. She's done. Weld it in. Looks really pretty. Very happy about that. Hey. I wish I could say I'm done. Uh, you got to grind. I got a lot of grinding today. I've been grinding all day. I've been grinding all day, <laughs> as they say. Uh, obviously, the subframe mount needs to sit flush on this. These, I could probably get away with not grinding anything. Yeah, well, it's just a round mount, right? And yeah. it probably only goes to there, so you probably could. Yeah, I don't want to be that guy. So I'm going to get all the plug welds nice and flat. And then the edges, I got to make sure are flat also, just in case it overlaps a little bit. Especially on these things, because they're so small. Obviously, the the subframe mount is probably gonna hang over a little bit. So we gotta grind all the edges, all the plug welds, and then go over to this thing and then do the seams. So. Yeah, I mean, well, then tomorrow you're gonna have to seam seal it all. Well, prime it all, seam seal it. Clean it. Clean, well, that was first. That, yeah, that was somewhere in there. You know the order of things. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Definitely worth it. Well, I mean, let's talk about not doing it. You'd get about a few miles down the road. Subframe goes. Nah, you you'd, you'd get pretty far, but it clunk for a long time. Yeah, and then you'd hit a guardrail as your half your subframe fell out. I don't want to hit you guys with another time lapse, but I'm gonna have to do that. They don't want All right, well, I feel like I've littered you guys enough with enough time lapses today, but uh, I got two out of the six fully grinded and prepped and ready for paint. And uh, honestly, these came out beautiful. I am so happy with how these pieces look. Looks like a nice little OEM integration. Now, once we seam seal it, paint it and everything, it will literally look OEM and I'm so pumped about it. These things, uh, I'm dreading on doing. My little air compressor is just not cutting it. This thing, I need to upgrade. I need to upgrade real soon. <laughs> I definitely didn't anticipate today being a how-to-ish video, but it ended up being that way. Um, this is just taken forever. Um, and I don't want to discourage anyone from trying this because, I mean, you really should do this if you have an E46 or E36. Um, you could do it way more half-assed, to be honest, and be perfectly fine. So don't be discouraged. It doesn't have to come out all crazy nice. Just get them in there and get your car back together. So I'm happy we repaired the damage, then we upgraded it, got it ready for dropping in the subframe, and now once it's all done, I'll never have to worry about it again. It's gonna be amazing. So this is just one of those things, just suck it up and do it and everything will be great. So we'll get it sealed up, we'll unbody the whole thing tomorrow, it'll look beautiful, and then we're one step closer to getting this thing on the road. So my ass is completely kicked and I can't even go to McDonald's and get a cheeseburger because stupid coronavirus <laughs> so i'm pissed <laughs> but whatever um thank you guys for watching and i hope you guys aren't going too stir crazy and i hope you guys are staying nice and healthy so we're gonna end it there um you guys know the deal <laughs> like comment subscribe stay tuned for more content and we'll see you guys tomorrow